All right, so we're back for part two of day two, and we're gonna go ahead and head over to the island, put on our frat warrior fatigues, hit the lighthouse and turn in that, and then go to the arena and turn that in, and then let's hit the junkyard, pick up the quest, and go to the barrel with something burning in it. So what we wanna do here is funk sling the dictionary and the magnet on the appropriate gremlin. Uh, the vegetable gremlin is not the right one for here, so uh, you either kill him or use uh, anything to make the turn free. Uh, you don't want to banish him just yet because we'll need to encounter the vegetable gremlin later. So just keep funk slinging these until you either get the tool or you get the message that indicates that they don't have it. You don't have to return to Yasarian after each time that you get a tool. You can just move directly on to the next part. And if with any luck, we'll get the uh, tool from the first encounter of each gremlin. With the, uh, the one here, if he makes the automatic eyeball peeler, then that's not the correct one. So you can go ahead and kill him. All right, we got that. Then we'll hit the refrigerator. We're looking for the spider gremlin here. And there we go, he doesn't have it. Uh, Mafia will tell you if they don't have the tool. It'll keep track of what messages um, indicate that. So, uh, Batwing Gremlin does not have the uh, tool, and we've already taken care of him, so we can banish that one. Um, or we can use any kind of free uh, kill, like if we had a green smoke bomb at this point, we could use that. Uh, but we'll do the, uh, the tranquilizer dart for now. And real quick, I'm going to go over here and feed our car. So we can use that as a banish as well if we need to. We just need to get it up to having at least uh, 50 fuel. All right, and then we'll head back over to the fridge. There we go. And we just need to go to the rusted out car. Uh, anything except for the vegetable gremlin here we can banish and of course we got the picks to beat off itself and beat you with it message so that doesn't have the tool banish that one banish that one and of course we're not going to banish the witch's night because we're going to need to eat the horseradishes soon here. You can let Mafia run these for you as well. Uh, I just prefer to do it this way just to be sure because uh, it seems like sometimes Wham ends up killing the gremlin uh, before we get a confirmation that it doesn't have a tool. So Mafia will keep track of which quest you've turned in. You want to make sure that you've turned in each one that you did. Uh, it sucks real bad when you've spent like 20 turns here on the battlefield and you realize you didn't turn in the Orchard quest. So from here we're at 80 hippies defeated already. So we need 7 turns here on the battlefield to open up the nunnery. So we'll go ahead and automate those. And we're just going to let that run. And if you want, you can set up your... Uh, settings on your Mafia installation here. Um, I believe it's Batbrain that controls it, but uh, set it up so that it'll olfact the Green Ops Soldier. Uh, that one will drop the green smoke bombs and the uh, round green sunglasses, which those are a nice little uh, moxie boost, but you can sell them in the mall as well later on. Alright, so we've got our seven turns there. Let's hit the nunnery, pick up the quest. Uh, right now it's projecting 53 to 79 turns before we have all the meat. Uh, it's not quite good enough, so we're going to go and we're going to fuel up our car again. And we'll drive observantly. That's going to take our meat drops up to 110. Put on our pirate costume. Swap out our hoop earring for the gold detected badge. Let's go ahead and check out our Kremlin's Greatest Briefcase. 
and try to get that meat buff. There we go, we got a meat buff from that. And then we're gonna do our first batch of filling our stomach for the day. So use some milk, eat five of those. Uh, we could have a green bean casserole uh, or we could even use um, the gravy boat for something, but we don't want to use the gravy boat yet. Green bean casserole will give us a slight boost to meat, uh, but I want to keep that just in case we have a sleaze uh, elemental test when we get to the layer. So uh, let's go ahead and eat. Let's just do one browser cookie. So the horseradishes gave us the kicked in the sinuses effect, which is um, 50 or 100% to me, I forget which. And then we'll go ahead and we'll just run the maximizer. We're gonna have to unaffect a couple of the uh, accordion thief buffs, and I'm gonna actually swap our mood out to our level 13 mood. We're almost level 13 anyway, and we'll execute that. Uh, once you do the arena quest, you get the option to listen to some music. Uh, well, if we bust a move, that's a meat drop of plus 40, so we'll want to do that as well, and then. Uh, most likely we're just going to have the source terminal enhance. Yep, there we go. So we'll do that. Uh, you could put on the tip jar and the uh, saucepan, but I'm not going to do that. It's only plus five for each and reduces our muscle, so not really worth it. And that puts us at 10 to 14 turns here until we have all the meat, so that's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and do that, and let's just set it for 14 and see where we go. Uh, make sure you watch your AP or HP rather uh, to ensure that you don't get beaten up, uh, especially when you're automating these. If you don't have Mafia set up to abort when you get beaten up or below a certain level of HP, uh, then you can waste a bunch of turns here. And you can watch the uh, CLI here and see how we're doing. It's going to tell us uh, we got 10,000 meat left to recover after that last one, 1,000, so it looks like 12 turns is going to get us through there. And it did, uh, so we only spent 12 out of those 14 that was projected right in the middle of the 10 to 14. So, nunnery is done. We're at 192 hippies defeated. Uh, since we have all those quests turned in, that means that we only have to spend about 26 adventures on the battlefield to finish the war. Uh, you will unlock the farm at some point. You could do the farm if you really wanted to. That's going to take you at least 20 turns, a little more than 20 turns if you're following the shortcut. And that's not going to save you a whole lot of time since um, 26 turns total on the battlefield is going to finish it. Uh, we got 8 turns till we open the farm. And then we would have 20 turns on the farm to do that whole quest. That's 28 turns there. And then we'd still have another 8 to 16 to finish this up. So it's not going to save you any time. So you skip the farm. Just do the normal 5. Uh, it's pretty standard. The fra uh, frat 5 is what you'll probably hear it referred to as. Um, so before we continue on, let's swap out some of our gear for plus item drops. And then we'll hit that, and we'll do 26 turns there, and that should wrap up the war for us. Uh, just keep an eye on your HP again to make sure you don't get beaten up, and we'll let that run, and then we'll pick it back up in just a second here. All right, so just about got that wrapped up. Uh, we get a little warning saying the semi-rare window uh, has opened up. So um, we still have one more turn here in the battlefield. We'll go ahead and just do that one manually real quick. And then we're going to want to, before we go to the hippie camp to finish the war, go and turn in the gear that we've gotten. So this is why we did not farm for red pixel potions. We can get a bunch of these gauze garters. Uh, they restore 80 to 120 HP. And if you Funk Sling two of those, uh, you only got like maybe two or three rounds till you wipe out the shadow later on. So we got a bunch of gear here. I'm not going to worry about manually doing that. I'm just going to use Mafia's little Coin Master tool here. Hit the Quarter Master and uh, keep your Fire Poi, Flowing Hippie Skirt, your Gaia Beads, uh, maybe the Lock and Stock Sandals, and then the uh, Round Green Sunglasses. Uh, we'll sell just some of those, but we're going to keep some. 
everything else just sell the max possible unless for some reason you want to keep some of that stuff uh, but it's not really gonna be very important so and then we'll hit the rest of these and we're gonna just sell certain amounts we're gonna keep one fire poi that's a two-handed weapon that does fire damage so that's gonna help us if we have an elemental test that involves fire and actually let's just redo that real quick all right there we go so sell two of those uh, we got four Gaia beads those do stench damage we're gonna want to keep three of their accessories uh, in case we have a stench damage elemental test the lock and stock sandals will just keep one and the round green sunglasses will keep all of those and uh, depending on how you set up mafia is gonna try to keep the uh, war hippie fatigues uh, you can sell those manually or just change your settings so that they'll let you sell them and then we'll buy some gauze garters uh, you could if you really wanted to uh, buy a couple other things here as well as long as you have like 10 of those gauze garters you could get a beer bong that does stench damage that would help for elemental test uh, you got the uh, kick-ass kicks that do sleaze um, but we're not going to worry about those we have plenty of sleaze and stench damage items right now so we'll just buy all gauze garters that's 60 of them just in case we need some kind of healing later on and then we'll go to the hippie camp and we're gonna beat the guy all right so we'll go visit the council we'll get that iron bait of industry and now we just have to wrap up our other quests here so let's put our gravy boat back on and put back on the gold detective badge and then head over to the crypt we got the alcove that's initiative so let's go ahead and actually see what we can buff for that we want to buff it as high as you can uh, we can put some chopsticks on as a weapon we can uh, use our terminal we got a few other things here we do want to save some of this stuff to use for the uh, initiative test when we get to the tower as well so uh, don't go too overboard uh, anything uh, I think it's like 300 is really where we want to be to make sure that we get the modern zombies and we can just let that run I'll just set it at 12 and let it go you'll notice that we've hit level 13 now so uh, we do want to drop that monster level down unless there's some reason that we need it up on a quest like if we still had the oil peak to do for example um, but we want to slow down our leveling now as much as possible uh, the reason being um, if you didn't already know that if you do beat the sorceress when you're level 13 uh, you get an extra instant karma there which is once you discard it an 11 karma gain once you ascend uh, you, it's okay if you level up while defeating the sorceress. So you're level 13 when you encounter her, but 14 afterwards, you'll still get it. Uh, but if you level up before you get to her, you will not get that extra karma. Uh, every single run, getting that, it does add up over time. So uh, if you're trying to perm every skill, then you definitely want to make sure that you're beating the sorceress while level 13. All right, so we'll beat the boner dig on. And I'm gonna just leave that chest for now and wait till after we break the prism for that. And let's go ahead and swap back our equipment. We still have the desert, the hidden temple, and the rest of the peak. Let's go ahead and go kill Spooky Raven real quick. Um, be careful here because he'll do some uh, significant damage to you initially uh, as you can see he did 940 points of sleaze damage so it is worth buffing your elemental resistance before you face him if you're worried about getting beaten still uh, but usually it's not really that big of a deal and now that he's gone let's go ahead and just do the temple and this is where we're going to use our wool we'll use one initially then we'll hit the temple and first thing you want to do when you hit the temple is and you, you can actually time this um, for other purposes, like if you need to extend some buffs, like for uh, example, like doing the nun meat quest, um, 
And when you go to explore the higher levels and then head towards the top, you gain three adventures and it extends the effect of everything you have um, by three adventures. So if you needed to, you could hit that real quick um, during the Nunmi quest to extend some of the effects. Like if you use the uh, inhaler, for example, to boost your meat gain um, and you're at nine adventures and you know you still have a few left before you get the meat, all the rest of the meat, uh, just do this one real quick. Um, but I just do it for the adventure gain. I don't really worry too much about extending buffs. We'll hit the temple again, and this time we'll climb down some vines to get the nostril of the serpent. Use another stone wool, go back to the temple. And this time, we're going to poke around the ground floor. Go down the stairs, the lightning guy, go through the door, raise your hands, continue, and then spell out bananas. and then do nothing and we've now unlocked the hidden city you want to boost your non-combats here so I'm gonna feed the car real quick and I'm just gonna go ahead and feed it up to at least 87 so that we have a banish after we use the buff alright and then we'll drive stealthily double check that your mood is still set to uh, negative combats and then let's go ahead to hit the hidden city go to the park what we want here is to get the non-combat as soon as we can and when you get the non-combat you want to dump out the dumpster that's going to banish all the pygmy janitors to the park here and then hopefully we'll encounter a janitor after that as well otherwise after enough turns here, you're going to get the machete automatically. We're going to need that. And there we go. Knock over the dumpster. If you get the dumpster encounter again after that, dig through the dumpster that time. Uh, you'll get bowling balls or some of the surgeon uh, gear, which we'll need very shortly here. And then if you do encounter a janitor, go ahead and equip that machete. Let's do one more and see if we get a janitor. And we did not. Alright, so let's just go ahead and not worry about that. If you get a janitor, you'll want to use the book of matches that you get from him to open up the tavern. And then buy some bolts of scorpions. But I'm not going to burn too many turns there, so we can just banish the drunken pygmies. So with that machete equipped, we're going to want to hit each of these shrines. Uh, since we have the machete... Uh, these will not cost us any turns. So rather than actually clicking through each, everything, you can just set Mafia for two turns. And let's actually do our move to Apathetic. And just go through each one until you get Fire One Ready, uh, What Are You Doing, Air Apparent, and then Earthbound and Down. And then hit the ziggurat as well and then make sure you switch back to your astral mace all right uh, general order you want to do bowling alien and hospital don't matter you can those are interchangeable but you always want to do the apartment building before the office why is that well you're gonna encounter the accountants in both the apartment building and the office. Difference is, the office building, you need all five of the files that those accountants drop. So if you just do the office building first, you have to hope that you get all five of those drops before you encounter the second non-combat. So generally, you'll be able to get thrice cursed and get all, or at least most of those files by the time you finish the apartment building. So always do the apartment building before the office. It just makes sense. All right, so banish the drunken pygmy and the orderlies. And then after that, we just need to fight five of these bowlers and go ahead and roll the ball every time you get it. And once you've got both of those banished or you have the orderlies banished, but you have 11 bowls of scorpions, then it's safe to let Mafia run it for you and just set your goal as the scorched stone sphere. And it should only take us a handful of turns here. 
All right, so once you've got that, go to the shrine, drop the ball, and then we did get one piece of surgeon gear, so we're going to want to put that on first, and then hit the hidden hospital. Uh, you can olfact the surgeon if you want, or you can banish the nurse. Um, either way, that will increase your odds of getting all the surgeon gear and getting that non-combat sooner. I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to go ahead and go. And of course, because I did that, we get three nurses in a row. Make sure you equip each of these items you as you get them. And the only reason why I didn't olfact the surgeon at that point was because I want to save it. Uh, we're going to need to do two olfactions back to back here. Um, we're going to olfact the shaman first. And then we're going to need to olfact the accountant. Switch your gear back. And we could take off the cardigan at this point and swap it out for the whatever else you have. And let's go ahead and hit department. If you get an accountant, that's fine. If you get the lawyer, you're going to want to banish him. There is a non-combat here where you can banish the lawyer. Uh, that's a waste. You should already be thrice cursed by the time you get to that non-combat. Um, worst case scenario, you may have to use your... Uh, you could use the time spinner to repeat the fight if you had to. Uh, so we got our thrice cursed, so we're good on that. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can unaffect that. There we go. All right. Now we we'll want to olfact the accountant and hopefully pick up all of the files fairly quickly here. Should be getting the non-combat in just a moment. And since we're thrice cursed, we'll go ahead and fight the spirit. We're going to use the sphere and then hit the office building. Make sure your choices, if you use them, are set to fight spirit or get binder clip or fight accountant. All right, so we got the fifth uh, file here. Let's go ahead and just automate it. All right, so we got that one. And then we'll go ahead and use the sphere. And get our last piece of the triangle. Then we'll go to the ziggurat and defeat this protector specter. And then we'll want to create the staff of Ed. And we're going to need to get some more adventures here. So we'll use our second astral energy drink. Equip our UV compass. And then head over to the desert. Now I'd really like to have a clover here. Usually I try to clover the oasis after the first 10 turns here. That gives you 20 turns of ultra hydrated and that's usually enough to get all the pieces of the manual. But we don't have enough clovers so that's not going to work for this, uh, this particular run. Um, but just keep that in mind. That does help trim a couple of turns um, off of this part of the the whole run since we will have to hit the oasis a few times to pick up ultra hydrated now. Alright so obviously we didn't get all 15 pages during that run we only had five turns after we got that quest. So we'll hit the oasis we'll get ultra hydrated and then we're gonna spend five turns in the desert. We do want to spend at least um, 20 turns in the desert just to make sure that we get at least 40% explored before we do the uh, Oasis leg of it. Uh, usually that's enough to get all the worm riding manual pages. If not, you'll just have to spend a couple extra turns there. Um, obviously we won't have the killing jar uh, because we skipped the whole first floor of the manor. Uh, there's no good way to get that jar without actually going through each part of the first floor uh, because you cannot visit that library unless you've done all the other parts. So. 
Let's make sure that we're at 40% exploration, and we are. Go ahead and put our fish hatchet back on, and then hit the oasis again, and we're going to unfortunately waste another turn here getting ultra hydrated, even though we're not doing the desert anymore, uh, but that's fine. So what we're looking for here is we want to get the drum machine from the blur, and we want to get the stone rose, which is a non-combat got to delay a few turns here before we'll get it. Uh, if you hit the swarm of scarab beetles, disintegrate them. Guarantees you get a mojo filter. We're going to use that. And then we're going to go ahead and drink our other astral energy drink. And then let's just go ahead and run those turns automatically. All right, we didn't quite get the drum machine yet. All right, so once we have that, we'll go turn it in, visit Nasser, give him the stone rose, the black paint we bought earlier, all the missing pages of the book, use both pamphlets, and then go worm riding, and that's going to open up the pyramid, visit the pyramid, and since we already put the staff together, it's going to open it up, and then we'll hit that upper chamber, and we'll just set this for 10, uncheck that, and run it. Uh, we'll probably pick up some crumbling wooden wheels there, but we're not worried too much about getting that many of those because we're going to make it up by getting ratchets on the uh, the next level. All right, so once you get the nothing more to do here, then you're good. And we can go and do the middle chamber. You're going to want to banish the asp and the servant so that we're only fighting the rats. So we'll use Snoke Mom. And let's see if we have a tennis ball. We do. And then you can just run it. Uh, just watch. Make sure you don't get beaten up. We've got three crumbling wooden wheels. So we need seven ratchets. And we got two so far. If you don't get enough, let's go ahead and just buff our item drops real quick. Alright, and then hit it again, and we'll open up the control room in a second here. If you don't have enough rat ratchets and uh, wheels by then, you'll just have to adventure a little bit more in the middle chamber to get enough. So we've got nine total, we're going to have to do one more. So let's just set our goal for plus one. And we should pick it up on the first turn there, hopefully. Hit the control room. We're going to use a wheel or a ratchet three times first. Then head to the lower chambers, go back. Then we're going to use a ratchet or a wheel four times. And then we'll go down there again and we'll return. And then three more times and that's going to open up Ed's chamber. And then let's go ahead and go kill Ed. Uh, since we're level 13, uh, he shouldn't be much of a challenge at this point. As you can see, I'm just using regular straight attacks, not even lunging thrust smack, and it's taking him out. So, a uh, pretty easy fight. And we got that, so now all we have left to do is finish up the Highland Lord's quest. We're going to need our non-combats buffed as much as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and go feed the car real quick. We need 37 fuel to be able to do the buff. Then we'll drive stealthily. And then let's go ahead and just get some booze. We have four liver space. And we're down to nine adventures, so we're going to need to drink a little bit. Cast Ode on effect one of those. 
All right, so we'll drink those. And then we'll drink the two reverse tantali. That's going to give us a hot damage bonus for 80 turns. So if we do get a elemental test that's hot damage, that's going to help. Head back, and let's go to Twin Peak. What we're hoping for is to either get the non-combats -com right away, or if we don't, then we want to fight the, uh, the hedge monsters. So let's go ahead and banish those guys. There we go. An elephant topiary animal. If you get the rusty hedge trimmers, use those right away. It takes you immediately to the non-combat. Uh, you shouldn't be having to buff for these things, so if you do have to, then you have some work to do. Let's see what we got here. Green smoke bomb. Another green smoke bomb, and there's another topiary animal. Right, so you should have enough passive stench resistance, passive item drops uh, to get through that, and of course passive initiative. So uh, you really don't want to have to be scrambling around to be able to pass those tests. Now we got one more. We just got to get the initiative test. Wait, who's that? Pursue your double, and then... There we go. So we just have a boo peak left. Uh, we want to make sure item drops are good for this uh, so that we get enough boo, boo clues. We'll want to get three clues and get this down to 90% haughtedness. So hopefully those will uh, line up to where we have them both at the same time. Keep an eye on your health here. Easy to get beaten up by these ghosts. So restore HP if you have to. So we got three clues. We're at 92% hauntedness. So we'll do one more turn there before we start using our clues. All right, let's go ahead and use one. Right, so we'll want to use our modifier, maximizer, and do cold res and spooky res. I'm going to hit creatable just because I don't have the candy corn costume yet. That'll buy it for us. Switch it back to on hand. Just equip everything. And then, of course, you can use uh, Elemental Saw Sphere, Scary Sauce, Astral Shell, um, other stuff you want to save for the, uh, the Hedge Maze later. Um, so we do have four of these Ectoplasmic Orbs, so using one of those isn't going to hurt. But we'll save that Oil of Parlay. And uh, by the way, Antifreeze, I'm not even going to use it all. I'm just going to sell that in the mall. Uh, that is a semi-rare, so you get a decent amount of uh, meat for that. So once we've got that, Restore and make sure you've used a clue and then adventure at a boot peak mafia is going to warn you how much damage it's going to do each round so if you're going to get beaten up you can go ahead and flee the scene just keep in mind that if you do flee the scene you're going to have to use more than three clues and you can also restore your hp between clue usage so make sure you do that if you need to but you don't want to start another round of the clue if you don't have enough hp to get through it Ideally, if you're buffing yourself well enough and you have the right passives uh, for the elemental resistance, then you should be able to get through the whole thing without having to worry about it. So we're to zero hauntedness. We'll adventure there again to light it up. And then we'll go talk to Highland Lord. And then we'll go back to the council. And we're on the home stretch here now. So we got the mission to go to the uh, Naughty Sorcerer's Tower. Let's hit the registration desk and see what we got. You're always going to have initiative for the first one. That's the fastest adventurer contest. Next one's always going to be an off stat. Uh, we got smartest, that means mysticality. If you got smoothest, that's going to be moxie. And of course, strongest is muscle. And then your elemental test is the last one. We got coldest adventurer. So we need to be able to do cold damage. So let's go ahead and see what we got for cold damage. All right, so we got Unfortunatus Fool's Cap. That's 10. Uh, the rest of our stuff doesn't really do any. Um, but we do have a couple skills here. We got Beard Freeze and Icy Glare. And then we have a uh, Colorful Toad. Those are all going to help. Um, and then we have Bend Hell, which doubles your elemental damage. Uh, but that's still only going to take us to 74. So let's go ahead and just check out our 
KGB real quick and we can change that to plus five prismatic damage run this again and we're gonna equip that and that so we did do a little bit of an oversight earlier uh, there was paranormal activity in the haunted kitchen if we had done that and busted that ghost we would have gotten the frigid derringer which is a gun that does 10 cold damage uh, that would e easily got us up to 50 um, so in this instance we're only going to be at 86 total so we can check to see what we have creatable see if there's anything but there's not so we'll just hit that and that's probably going to only get us to number three uh, we want to be at 100 damage to get number two uh, but we still hit number two anyway somehow so maybe mafia's score here wasn't quite accurate um, we do have other uh, things that can affect that so uh, that's fine number two is where we want to be that's ideal so let's do initiative and just equip everything we have for that again we can hit up our briefcase here and switch that to initiative instead of damage absorption and then we'll want to cast any skills we have and then bow-legged swagger is a skill that will double our initiative bonus so we'll go and anytime that you see where it says you feel extremely optimistic then you're doing pretty good and we'll hit that and we get number two so now we have mysticality and we'll see what we get with that I thing you want to keep in mind is that in standard there's no way to freely craft stuff so if you have to craft things to buff your mysticality it's gonna cost you adventures so you really have to kind of watch to see where the trade-off is um, costing adventures to rank up higher in the contest may not actually save you adventures overall um, or it might it depends on really exactly what all you're getting out of it so we'll execute all those and then let's go ahead and see what we have for creatable after that uh, we got ointment of the occult uh, that'll do plus 100 uh, we want to be 600 to rank as number two um, and then we have a few things here that we can buy to do it so if we do all of this we're going to spend two turns and we'll be at 539 that should get us to number three all right so then we'll go ahead and enter that and we're actually number four so not quite where we wanted to be all right so I just run muscle as a modifier afterwards and just equip whatever it wants us to equip make sure you store your HP first all right so let's go ahead and take out each of the uh, contestants and you can let mafia run it if you want we're gonna need to up it to three here for smartest Drop it back down to one and then do coldest. As always, watch your HP through all, all of that. Go back to the desk, claim your prize, and then let's go to the ceremony and meet Frank. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to buff all our elemental resistances. doesn't really matter what you're equipping because there's not going to be any battles to fight so just whatever gives you the most resistance go ahead and slap those on and we'll use the uh, few things that we saved if you had to you could use your car and drive safely as well make sure you restore your HP and then we'll hit the maze and you're gonna do the opposite of what Frank says each time and that gets us out of here in just three turns escape the maze now we're gonna need to open up that door so let's see what we got for keys oh and looks like we uh, made a little bit of a mistake here 
So we somehow managed to accidentally purchase a Boris's ring. Uh, so that used it up one of our fat loot tokens. So the only thing we can do at this point is go get the wand and uh, then wand that, zap it, and turn it into one of the keys. So we'll have to do that real quick. So that just kind of illustrates the importance of taking your time with this stuff and not rushing through it because you're trying to make a video about it. So to get the wand, we're going to go here and we're going to go to the enormous greater than sign. And I'm just going to... Alright, so I went ahead and grabbed the wand real quick. And we're just going to zap this and it should give us the uh, keys that we need. And then we'll go ahead and unlock the door. Alright, tower level one, you're just going to use the beehive right away. Level two, you're going to want to buff meat drops, and then you should be able to destroy that wall of meat in one turn. Uh, make sure you restore HP first. And then for the third level, we're going to need either that electric boning knife, or we need to have garbage nova permed. Um, either way is fine. But if you have the bony knife, obviously just use that. Tower level 4, you can either break the mirror and not spend a turn, or go ahead and get the confidence intrinsic. And then for the shadow, we're going to use those gauze garters. And a couple rounds should finish him off. All right, now keep in mind you're going to lose all your buffs in just a second here. So you want to equip anything that is going to improve your stats, your moxie, and your muscle if you need to in order to help survive the sorcerers. Also make sure that you've made that wand of Nagamar first. Uh, Mafia will remind you. And then go ahead and fight the sorceress. And since we are level 13, uh, we got that instant karma. And let's go ahead and break the prism. Now if we had played as like maybe a turtle tamer or something like that, we may have gotten some extra karma here uh, for getting on the leaderboard. Um, but as a seal clubber, uh, we didn't do that run quite fast enough. Uh, as you can see, we uh, ended at 591 turns. Uh, definitely could have got that down lower if we hadn't made some mistakes. Uh, but it's still a two-day run, and uh, we're still going to get the extra 300 instead of the 200 karma. So from here, uh, you can do whatever you want in the after core, or you can ascend right away. Um, I do recommend uh, doing some of the ones per ascension stuff, like the Felonia quest and the uh, the ROFL MFAO Valley quest to get the facsimile dictionary that sells for a, a nice chunk of meat. And that's a useful pull on a soft core run. Um, so we're just going to leave that up to you. So, um, all right, so we'll go ahead and hit the gash. Got our goofballs. Any other things that we need to take care of real quick here. And then we'll hit ascend. And there you go. So 311 karma plus 11 for each instant karma we discarded. Uh, if we had had enough turns left, um, if I hadn't screwed up on the keys, uh, we could have done the C quest real quick. It's another 11 karma. Uh, if we had hit the leaderboard, that's another 11 karma. Um, so potentially you could be making um, quite a bit, but it's at least 311 every single day if you're doing these two-day hardcore runs. So. Um, Definitely beats two-day unrestricted or two-day community service runs when it comes to just the amount of karma that you're earning. Uh, but it does definitely take an investment of time. So that's it. That's our two-day run. Uh, definitely leave me any comments if you have any suggestions on what to do to improve the run aside from not screwing up on the keys. Hit that like button if this helps you out. Uh, and subscribe because I'll have some more videos coming soon. I uh, plan to make one showing how to speedrun the sea uh, to get all your loathing, violence, and hatred gear. Get notified of every new video that I post.
And of course, tell all your friends. So thanks for watching, guys. And I just want to do a quick shout out to my clan, uh, the Ferengi Commerce Authority. Uh, basically the best clan in the game. So uh, if you're not a member, you should consider becoming a member. Shout out to uh, Donovan, Paco, everybody else. Uh, Robert, who's apparently dead or something. He has not coming around anymore. And uh, everybody else, you all know who you are. Um, just keep running those runs. And let me know if you guys need any help with anything. I'm always open to giving suggestions or helping you tweak your runs. So, all right, so that's it. I'm out.